Link is in. <clears throat> wow. My girl Peach is in. I'm ready. DK's in. This is going to be bananas. I'm not in. You're not in? I don't have one of those. What? I love you. You're my brother, but I don't know if you're ready. It's his time. Were you ready when I took your favorite princess away from you? No. no I, I actually didn't make it into the track team that day, so I was kind of upset. That was just a personal thing. You didn't make the track. I mean, I. Tra I mean, I. You didn't. I mean, I made the track team. You didn't make the track. I mean, I. It's a no I, cut. No, thing. There, there is a cut. You didn't make the track. I mean, I, I gotta get one. We Go get your together. mom. Because then this is gonna be bananas. Okay, we've got to do this quick because it gets really warm in the studio and I shouldn't be wearing a jumper in it, but it's flattering. Another reason this is good is I'm wearing like a properly fitted bra now. And it turns out I wasn't entirely correct when I said I have massive 48 F tits and I don't want to mislead you. They're only 48 double D. I feel like I've sinned against you. I have sinned against you, my lord. Oh, Jesus. And I would ask that your precious blood. And that this is going to be a ton of material for that one guy that meticulously watches my videos every single week and takes screenshots studying them and uh, my makeup technique or rather my husband's makeup technique, and uh, even go so far as to highlight the difference in shade between my face and my neck to try and estimate how much foundation is on. There are easier ways to get off to trans girls, mate. There's an entire genre. We've been turned into a genre. I mean, if you want to look up, you can prove that I do blend your foundation. You do blend very well. You do blend very well. Um, it was literally shading. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, from one wanker to another, whole bunch of them in fact, we're talking about Square Enix today. Although that actually... Because last week on the Dungeons and Dragons one, I did say D&D. &D, from one D&D &D to another D&D. &D, and then I said they're way bigger than D&D &D because I thought they weren't at the time. But actually, even though it's not as big a brag, it's a better pun, because it's accurate. Square Enix. Uh, we're talking about Square Enix uh, because even though uh, this video will mean that we've talked about them for three quarters of the year's Jimquisitions, we can't not. If any of you saw the news this past weekend, you knew this one was coming. Square Enix has shut down services for another game. You mean Babylon's Fall? No. No, another one. Chocobo GP? No, another one. Uh, Bravely Default Mobile then? No! Uh, Final Fantasy VII? No! <coughs> <coughs> so it wasn't the first soldier either? No. It was Marvel's Avengers. As we discuss Marvel's Avengers in today's video, we are operating under the assumption that Square Enix still technically publishes it, even though Crystal Dynamics and a whole bunch of shit was sold to Embracer Group. The situation with Avengers has been a bit unclear, and it was Crystal Dynamics that officially announced the game's shutdown. In any case, it's still a Square Enix published game that is shutting down, which has become par for the course with the company's live services, and also, you know, fuck Square Enix. Do I have any true believers in the house? <coughs> yes! Awesome. I'd say I can't believe it, but I can. I absolutely can believe that, yet again, that for the third out of four times this year, I'm doing another video about some utter bullshit Square Enix has pulled. In fact, it's the same bullshit. After such a diverse array of fucked up behaviour from the company throughout 2022, it seems like the EA of Japan has truly settled on a flavour. Dead service. 
flavour. Yes, after shutting down support for Babylon's Fall, Chocobo GP, Bravely Default Brilliant Lights and Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, yet another of the live services Square Enix desperately pumped out is closing its doors. Another game positioned as a long-term perpetual experience, and this time, it's a genuine fucking biggie. Marvel's Avengers has, at last, felt the cold kiss of the Tonbury's knife pressed against its tender breast. <laughs> Yeah, the only reason I can't say this particular news was predictable is that until now I'd completely and utterly fucking forgotten about this sad, snivelling, slime-slicked slice of artistic bankruptcy. One of 2020's worst games, a truly cynical exercise in so-called AAA money-grubbing, Marvel's Avengers was a basic as balls action game from the MMO light school responsible for such games as Destiny, Anthem, and whatever Dragon Age 4 was gonna be, before Anthem's humiliating defeat terrified EA and Bioware into making proper video games again. Also Outriders. Remember Outriders? Yeah? Yet another Square Enix live service among the throng of service shit this company kept flinging against the wall in the hope something would stick. Astoundingly, Outriders is still alive despite being so broken at launch I literally couldn't play it at all and having been ejected almost completely from public consciousness shortly after its unexceptional release. Of course, with Square Enix clearly shuttering all these games as part of some fucked up corporate strategy and Outriders looking like prime cut material, I'm sure that game's looking around very nervously right now. Funnily enough, I consider giving Outriders another chance every time I'm reminded it exists, which admittedly isn't often. But now that I'm thinking about it again, I can only ask, why bother? It's like getting invested in a Netflix series. It'll just get cancelled by a corporation that gives not one single solitary shit about its audience. So why should I fucking care? In fact, the Netflix of gaming might be a perfect name for Square E fucking Nicks. They just need the open and blatant support of transphobic rhetoric. There's time. Launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years with exciting new content released at a regular basis. So yeah, back to Marvel's Avengers. It was a game Crystal Dynamics promised to support for years to come. And I guess that's at least factually accurate, if we're being totally honest. Unlike the other services Squenix suckered paying customers into before pulling the plug, Avengers did actually last for years, plural. Not much longer than that, but still, it actually was supported for more than one full year, making it less flagrantly dishonest than most mainstream games with overly promised long-term commitment. Fucking ten-year plans. Marvel's stupid Avengers that suck and are shit was announced to a lukewarm reception. Fans were mostly thrown off by the art style that could neither commit to being distinct from the Marvel Cinematic Universe nor completely emulate it. As a result, the vaguely movie-adjacent characters looked off-model cheap imitations of the MCU versions. The common joke among fans was that these particular Avengers were the stunt doubles. It didn't help that the game overall was so drab, mostly grey and brown colours with dreary city environments or barren open spaces rendered with unremarkable graphical quality. Oh, and Spider-Man was a PlayStation exclusive because that was shitty of them, but considering it took months and months for him to ever actually appear, maybe it wasn't so bad a transgression. But Fitting the overall cynicism of the production, Square Enix proudly beamed the game would feature no loot boxes and expected a hero's welcome for this, as if not doing something predatory and evil was worthy of special praise, as if a standing ovation is warranted for the bare fucking minimum. We won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. 
anybody with half a brain knew that this promise meant shit, that it was just propaganda banking on the unpopularity of in-game gambling to try and make all the other unethical monetization appear more palatable. We've talked about this before, how the industry pushes the envelope in terms of scumbag moves to retroactively improve the reputation of its prior scumbaggery. In this case, throwing loot boxes onto the bus to justify microtransactions. Oh, and Avengers fucking had microtransactions. Loads of them. Like any live service, the point was never to be a good game. It was to cobble together a viable product and hurry it out the gate with an untrustworthy pledge to finish it after launch, all with an aim to monetize the ever-loving fuck out of the thing. Individual purchases were bolstered by the now obligatory battle pass, once again hammering home the fact that these games are meant to be investments, long term experiences for which such passes were designed, experiences that Square Enix has proven five times now, willing to axe at any time. It's okay though, because all these additional purchases were, say it with me, just cosmetic! A weak excuse stated by bad faith con merchants and the artistically blinkered that relies on the moronic assertion that cosmetics have nothing to do with the enjoyment of the gameplay. But whatever, they were just cosmetic. <laughs> Until they weren't. So our promise to the community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. We won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. 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 <laughs> so our promise to the community is that we won't have pay to win scenarios. <laughs> our promise to the community. Our promise. Our promise. Our promise. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our promise to the community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. <laughs> Our promise to the community a horrific evil. Every new superhero and every new region will be delivered at no additional cost. And we're excited to be partnering with PlayStation to bring some awesome surprises. Every new superhero will be delivered at no additional cost. <laughs> A horrific evil. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years. <laughs> <laughs> so our promise to the community... Pay to win scenarios. Going back on its cosmetic-only promise, Crystal Dynamics added XP boosters to the microtransaction menu, offering players a fast track to leveling up. This came after they nerfed XP gains and made it slower to level with the hilariously pathetic excuse that players were overwhelmed and confused by gaining experience too quickly. It was perhaps the dumbest attempt to ever justify grinding in a game, and it was proven in sincere dishonest bullshit the moment Crystal Dynamics sped the progression back up for a price. <laughs> it's actually really fucking infuriating looking back just how openly and blatantly Crystal Dynamics told an outright lie. A lie that nobody there could have been fucking stupid enough to think would hold water the moment they went back on it. And it was a double backtrack to boot, reversing their levelling up his confusing lie and their just cosmetic lie in one desperate cash grab. This is just something game industry culture thinks is okay. They literally think telling obvious lies that they themselves intend to expose is okay. And it comes to them more naturally than taking a hot, soft dump. I tell you what, if you ever start dating someone who says they work in video games PR, be careful. The sheer comfort with which they lie should put anyone on edge. Throughout its miserable lifespan, Avengers put out and revised content roadmaps that in true live service fashion were about as trustworthy as literally anything else Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix said. Then again, considering the game was reportedly a huge loss for the publisher, it's hardly surprising they couldn't stick to the script, demonstrating perfectly what I've said for years about the unsustainability of market-wide service game adoption, Square Enix admitted to 11 billion yen in losses and stated its big HD game releases would have been profitable had Avengers not been such a failure. I think it's pretty hilarious that this otherwise profitable sector, including real full-fledged single-player games like FF7 Remake, got fucked over by the projected cash cow, the gravy train ticket, the thing that was supposed to generate infinite recurrent revenue just like that Ubisoft chart. 
It's almost as if the market for single player never died like publishers eagerly claimed. That an industry full of service games would blitz through a player base that couldn't devote time and money to all of them. And that these things have been demonstrated time and time and fucking time again. But these imbecilic cunts won't listen. Just, just listen. Please, if not to me, then at least to both the recent and distant history of your own fucking industry. Can these executive dipshits just display a shred of pattern recognition once in their unhelpful lives? God damn. Jesus Christ. Other than own up to its own gold rushing mistakes, Square Enix threw Crystal Dynamics under the bus in a bid to save face. While confessing to the disappointing performance, professional cum puddle Yosuke Matsuda said the studio was the wrong fit for Avengers, as if any studio would have been right enough to stop the publisher severely misjudging the climate, market and audience, as if any developer would save those fuck faces from themselves. Marvel's Avengers was a disaster because it wasn't what people wanted, plain and simple. The live service udder had run dry, and it just wasn't what people wanted. Companies have gotten so used to telling us what they want, as if it's what we want, that they actually think they know us better than we do. But they don't even know the realities of their own business, let alone anything or anybody else. It might be arrogant for me to claim I understand the game market more than practically every video game publisher executive in the world, but it's true. And if you're not a wealth drunk, profit obsessed, out of touch old twat, you know better too. Because executives truly don't know what they're doing. They got where they got by failing upwards, having the right friends, and slitting as many throats as got in their way while scaling the corporate ladder. That's how business works. These people are barely people. And Square Enix is barely credible. It's not credible. It's incredible that they continue stumbling around in the world without one iota of embarrassment to show for itself. But hey, that's Square Enix for you, and Marvel's Avengers is just its latest victim. The game's developer, Crystal Dynamics, is now the acquisition of Embracer Group, sold off for a song along with a fuckload of other studios and properties as part of Square Enix's focus on other aspects of business, such as NFTs, a scam with even less credibility than themselves. All that's left is for us to sit back and guess as to what game Square Enix shuts down next. And the moment Square Enix remembers that Outriders exists, it's fucked. I'm a Joy is home. So proud. Aww. There's so much we can do together. Just one click and the fun begins. So many new things to discover and do. Time for bed. We circle back round now to what's been a theme for Square Enix in this short. 2023. Uh, so far, I'm not implying that the year is only four weeks long. Uh, I'm just saying it's it's we've only experienced it for a short amount of time. It is the full 12 months. I don't want to panic anyone. Um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, we're circling back round to what we've been saying about Square Enix on all these previous Jimquisitions with regards to player investment, player trust, all of these service games, all of these microtransaction propped ongoing experiences, they all trade on trust and the expectation that your investment in terms of finances and time will pay off in the form of a perpetuated uh, adventure, experience, journey, campaign, uh, waste of your fucking time. Which brings to mind what I said in a previous video and flashbacked to in that video to emphasize a point and we're gonna flash back to it again. Cue the flashback with once again Justin without the wobbly thing people do as a joke for flashbacks because uh, I find them cringy. The question becomes 
Why in the blue fuck damned hell should anybody ever trust a Square Enix live service or freemium game again? Across all these games, Square Enix may have burnt millions of people by now, plus the 12 people who played Babylon's Fall. Why on earth should anybody give a single solitary cent to this company's in-game economies in future, knowing they could be vaporised at a moment's notice and their purchases rendered effectively useless? That still holds true. Don't trust them. Like, I know that for a lot of you, uh, and people have wondered why I've not brought it up before, it's just because I don't fucking care. But for a lot of you, you know, you have that trust with Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, but the moment that stops being a cash cow, Square Enix will gut it. Because Square Enix doesn't care. It doesn't care about the, the art of the product because it only sees the product part. It doesn't care about media, it doesn't care about your investment, your enjoyment. Don't trust them. Whatever new game they try and shit out, whatever gravy train they try and chase next, don't trust them. They haven't earned it. They've got as much credibility as Netflix now, as I said. Now who knows exactly what's going on through Square Enix's silly little head. Maybe, as some have uh, uh, guessed, uh, suggested, uh, maybe they are gearing themselves up for a sale. Uh, I have a feeling uh, that with Microsoft making so many acquisitions, and all the acquisitions we've seen in other industries, like with Disney chomping everything up, um, I feel like a lot of third party publishers are greasily eyeing up the chance to uh, sell themselves off uh, so that their executives can cash the fuck out. Square Enix has uh, intimated that it's open to that idea, that might be what they're doing. Maybe they are just admitting the, the gold rush towards live services, they're admitting through action that that was complete horseshit, that it was short-sighted, that it was stupid, and that I, Stephanie Sterling, the Cassandra of video games, was correct, as per the huge. Or maybe it's the same reason they got rid of Crystal Dynamics and, and what was it, like, like other studios and like 50 different intellectual property, including Tomb Raider and Deus Ex. Maybe they are just seeing uh, their next cash cow in another avenue outside of, of live services, outside of traditional video games even. Uh, these NFTs, this cryptocurrency, the legs of which Square Enix continues to hump but it needs to be remembered. My favorite part of today's video. Square Enix's games division, HD, big budget games sector, would have been profitable if they'd stuck to single player experiences like Final Fantasy VII Remake. If they'd have stuck to non-live services. It was the live service, it was the cash cow, it was the gravy train, it was the get richer quicker scheme that lost them 11 billion yen. Live services truly were the fox in the yen house and on that note, I must depart because it really is getting warm in the jungle now. But it's worth it, thank God for me. Cause look at the size of them! Oh my god, you flinched, I'm so sorry. It was most of the psychological pain. <laughs> you are uh, gonna treat them to a little side profile. No. No. No? Why are you parading like that? Well, maybe I just won't stop the camera until you uh, walk off. You're ridiculous. Shameless you are. Shameless.